Excuse me, I'm looking for Mr. Morgenstein's apartment. Is he expecting you? He's my nephew on his wife's side. The people who live here must be very tired. They sit down when they ride in an elevator? Eighteen. Eighteen D. Thank you, young man. <laughs> come in, come in. Hello, Arnold. <laughs> Welcome to the new home. How are you, Uncle? Thank God as you see me. Health is everything, the rest is mud. <laughs> <laughs> have, uh, have some grapes, Uncle. Thank you, I'm having some grapes. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. Beautiful, Arnold. I always told you, Papa, of all the boys, you would be the one we'd all be proud of. Uncle? Oh. Hello, Rose. <laughs> Where have you been keeping yourself? Are you working? It's a slow season for night watching. Never mind, Uncle. I'll find you something. So don't worry. As long as I've got good relatives, I'll always eat. <laughs> always, Uncle. Family. That's the important thing. Man has a family. He's a multimillionaire. <laughs> Is that you, Uncle Samson? <laughs> the bar mitzvah boy. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Samson. Seth, I brought you this just for the occasion. It's, it's a tapas. Now that you're 13 years old and a man in the eyes of God, you can pray in it. Grow up to the law, to marriage, and to good deeds. Thank you, Uncle Samson. No, no, no. You're no longer a boy. We shake hands like men. <laughs> Arnold, that double-breasted blue suit, that would look good on Uncle. Sure. What's the matter with this suit you gave me last year? It's fine. Come, Uncle Samson. I already had it let out for you. <laughs> Where's Marjorie? Oh, dressing. Arnold, oh, no, wait till you see your new outfit. It's stunning. What, another new outfit? That's what I keep telling you, Rose. I do a little magic with a fountain pen and... Oh, stop. You know you love it. Marjorie! Oh, Marjorie, for heaven's sake, aren't you dressed yet? <sighs> I'm sorry, Mother. I overslept. Well, it's no wonder, considering what time you got in last night. Who were you with? Oh, Sandy. Oh, that's nice. Where'd you go? Went to the theater. Theater? Mm -hmm. Who are you today, Lady Macbeth or uh, Scarlett O'Hara? <laughs> what time did you get home? Mother, it wasn't that late. If it were anybody else except a lovely boy like Sandy Lamb, believe me, your father would hear about this. You think Sandy's just great, don't you? From a mother's viewpoint, he's a catch. It isn't every boy whose father owns a big department store. I know, but... do you like him? <laughs> he's a little young for me. Did something happen between you last night? Oh, Mother, one doesn't discuss those things with people. I'm not people, I'm your mother. What's come over you lately? You act so... so... Oh, I don't know. I'm 18. I'm growing up. So, you feel you should do things that grown-ups do, hmm? Well, is that wrong? It depends upon how you want to grow up. What did happen last night? He wanted to make love to me. <laughs> he didn't. What 
do I do about it? About what, darling? Oh, about the way I feel sometimes. Take those feelings, put them in the bank. Save them for the man who will appreciate them and love you for them after you marry him. But what if I never meet him? I met your father. Maybe I'll never be in love. Maybe I'm just not the type of person that falls in love. <laughs> Listen to the old lady of 18. Were you in love with Papa when you married him? When I met your father, I... I was in love with Rudolph Valentino. Now hurry up and get dressed before your brother is 14. The best fit I ever had in the family. <laughs> Either you're getting bigger, Arnold, or I'm getting smaller. I told you I already had it let out for you. Wear it in good health, Uncle. Marjorie! You'll be ready in a second. I'm all ready, Papa. Oh, Uncle Samson! Marjorie! <laughs> Say, uh, Marjorie, coming something, a lady. A few years ago, you sat on my knee. Now you look like a regular movie star. <laughs> Where's my candy bar? Always a candy bar. No candy bars, no Uncle Samson, right? <laughs> right, Uncle. I didn't bring one. What you want now, darling, the Uncle can't bring you in the pocket. My goodness, <laughs> come on, let's go. Come, Samson. Is my hat on okay, Mom? Yes, honey, it looks fine. I told you white would look good with this suit. Hurry up, we're going to be late. All right, come. San Rosso. Baruch Ato Adonai no Sein Ato Rohmei. Bechom Asar Bokor Votzon, Ko Asher Yavor Tachas Ashovet, Ho Ashi, Ho Ashi, Ho Ashi Ri, Yekodesh Ladonai, Lo yivakir, ben tov lo rav et lo yemi renu, be yimomer yemi renu, be ho yohu smuroso, ye kodesh lo yigoel, ele ha mitzvot. Timeless hand. Oh, happy dagger. This is thy sheath. There rust and left me to die. Splendid, splendid, very good indeed. Now, uh, we'll do the Friar Lawrence scene in a few minutes. Uh, Friar. Sugar bun, you were tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Marcia, do you really think it went all right? I mean, are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. Oh, honey, you're a great actress. You know, one day I'm going to be paying money to see you on Broadway. And I can say, I was the first one that ever encouraged her. Me, Marcia Zelenko. Hey, what's eating you anyway? Nothing's eating me. Come on, honey. This is Marcia, the girl with the x-ray eyes. Spill it. Well, I don't know, Marcia. It's, it's kind of a lot of things. I mean, sometimes I think that I can act, sure. you know? And, and I... Other times I don't feel that I have any talent at all. And the best thing to do is just get married to Sandy Lamb oh. and forget all about it. It's Sandy Lamb. Well, Lamb's is all right, but have you ever shopped at Macy's? Hey, what are you seeing him anyway? Well, Sandy's very sweet and... Are you going away this summer? Well, Mother's planning on all of us going away with the Lambs. Don't go. Why not? Because you've got to see what life is really like. Look, I got a job as a swimming instructor at a camp for little girls. Right across the lake from a camp with big boys. Oh, Marjorie, how would you like to be dramatic counselor? Well, I don't know, Marcia. Oh, what am I going to do with you? Honestly, you're sitting on oil land and you don't know it. Look, by the time you're 21, you're going to be beating off Sandy Lambs with a club. All right now, everyone ready on the stage? Right you. away. Sandy, please. What is that now? Arnold, go to sleep. 
But the bell... Sandy is leaning on it. Marjorie. Oh, Sandy, please. What's the matter with you, anyway? What, are you frigid or something? It's wrong to go on like this. It's not wrong. It's a biological necessity. <sighs> Sandy, you know it's getting awfully late. I think I... Marjorie, wait a minute. Hasn't he got a home? It's two o'clock in the morning already. Oh, stop worrying. I don't know. Every time she goes out, it's the same thing. What do they do out there in the hallway? Look, Marjorie can take care of herself. Is that so? Last week, she told me all about sex. Studied it in hygiene, she says. <laughs> Knows the whole business like a doctor. She talked about chromosomes and tubes and eggs and the male this and the female that. I tell you the truth, I was embarrassed. What is he doing out there? Right now, he's probably asking her to marry him. Oh, it's beautiful. But, Sandy, uh, really... It doesn't have to be next month or next year, even. Gosh, it must have cost a fortune. Well, it sometimes helps to have a department store in the family. <laughs> Go ahead, put it on. I can't. It only means we're engaged. Uh, but I don't know if I want to be engaged. Well, then, for Pete's sake, what do you want? Look, I'd like to know where I stand, Marjorie. We've been going together for six months. Let me think it over. <laughs> What's there to think over? We're in love, aren't we? Huh? Well, I'll just have to think about it, that's all. Oh, okay, Sandy? Good night. Where's the ring? Let me see the ring. What? How did you know? Sandy's mother called me and told me. Such a lovely woman. What a summer we're all going to have together. Two families of the engaged couple. Mother, it's... It's all happening so fast. Everybody's rushing me. Well, I'm not rushing you. I don't even know if I'm in love with Sandy. Well, you'll have plenty of time to make up your mind. You'll be with him all summer. That's just it. I, I don't think I should be with him. I should be alone. Alone? What, what, what is this? Where would you go? I, I could take a job. A job? What kind of a job? Dramatic counselor at a girl's camp. Where is all this coming from? That Masha Zelenko. What difference does that make, Mother? I've got to do some thinking before I suddenly find myself married and settle down with children. Now, what is so terrible about that? Someday you're going to have to do it. Mama, I I've got to go away. Please help me. Please. Well, that's what you want. Good night. What's the matter, Rose? You look worried. There's something to worry about. What? Marjorie. The kids are in bed. Marcia? Hmm? I can't do it. Why? Look, 
just don't feel right about it. Look, I've been sneaking across that lake every night for the past three weeks. Look at me. I'm as fat and sassy as ever. But it's against the rules. Supposing Clabber caught us, what would we do then? Look, how are we ever going to meet anybody here? Why, right across the lake at South Wind, there's a thousand guys. Oh, look at this. What have we here? Bunny costumes. How sweet. <laughs> all right, girls, we all ready? Yes, yes Miss Oh, Tamarack, oh, Tamarack, we never will forget you. You'll never leave our memories, our hearts will never let you. Your lakes of blue, green mountain tides, the skins and hearts, the horse that cries. Oh, Tamarack, dear Tamarack, we never will forget you. We'll beat to canoe and change these horrible ducks. You told me this was only a ten-minute trip. I'm freezing. Oh, why, honey bunch, you're actually having beginner's luck. The lake's warm. Voila! South wind. Oh, it's fabulous. Not a sound now. Why? They don't like non-paying guests. Do you want to get arrested? Arrested? Shh. <laughs> now then, remember, if we run into Mr. Breach, just walk right by as though you're a paying guest. There's thousands of them. Who's Mr. Greech? Satan, with white knickers and a two-foot flashlight. He's the owner. He's been known to chop up a strange canoe with his bare hands and burn it. Now hurry up, let's change our clothes. Come on, I got a date with one of the musicians. Okay, sugar bun, we're safe now. Marjorie, you're about to see show business. Real show business. everything around like a burlesque queen. That's Noel Airman. But you're moving wrongly. Oh. It isn't this. All right, wise guys. Uh, it's this. You see what I mean? Be a cat. Now, Bob, with you, it's just the opposite. Let me show you what I mean. Do you mind? No, of course not. Oh, he's terribly handsome. Careful, honey. He affects young girls the way whiskey hits an Indian. You make him sound dangerous. Noel Airman is the enemy of every mother in greater New York. Come on. All right, we're going to try the light cues, too. Oh, sure. Kill five and six. And boys, don't rush the feet. Take it easy, huh?
Yes. You're a good girl. Musicians, you can wrap it up. No, my ticket. You're right. You're always right. Uh, hi, you, Marge. Hi, Carlos. <laughs> oh, this is my friend Marjorie, a siren from across the lake. Hi, you kid. Care to join us for a drink? Oh, no, thank you. May, may I stay here and watch? Why, sure. Be my guest. Well, you're on your own, kid. Live it up. But remember, meet me back at the canoe at 12 o'clock sharp, okay? Okay. Hey, what about my job? I'm promoting it, honey. You know that. I never let you down. Wally, you back there? Yeah, I know. Okay, keep the red. Bring up the ambers. All right, then down the lavenders. Bring up number four. Wally, number four, what are you doing? Good. Quiet back there. Who are you? Mr. Airman, I'm terribly sorry. I... Please forgive me. Are you a guest? I don't allow guests in here during rehearsal. No. My name is Marjorie Morgenstern. I'm, I'm dramatic counselor at Camp Tamarack. Oh. A colleague. Well, uh, you're entitled all the courtesies of the profession. Please sit down. Thank you. What are you doing to yourself? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, Wally! I really am. Get the first aid. We got a casualty. Come on up, Noel. I can't imagine why I did that. Well, you're going to live. What show are you doing at Camp Tamarack this week? Uncle Wiggly. <laughs> uh, strong meat, huh? <laughs> Dr. Ronkin reporting to surgery. Marjorie, this is Wally. All he knows about medicine is doctoring his own bad sketches. Here, fix up her hand, Wally. And hold it a while, will you, so I can get through? Sure, no. Don't worry, Mark. I've never lost a patient. Oh, that's really nothing. Hold still. I'm sorry. For what? I don't know. I've always prided myself on brittle dialogue. All I can think of to say right now is the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. What a beautiful song. It's from Princess Jones, a show he's writing for Broadway. Precious love is what you are to me. A stairway to a star, a night in Shangri La of ecstasy. Lanterns of gold, lanterns of blue. There's no such person, for heaven's sakes. What else does he do? Well, let's see. He knows opera, history, literature, philosophy, speaks foreign languages, writes songs with his left hand, is the greatest dancer living, and... And I'm his assistant. He's saying you should know that lanterns lose their glow and hearts can break. So hold me close, my darling, then kiss me tenderly, and give your precious love, your very precious love. with a man like that. Well, it has its moments. Say, would you like to sit in for this run-through? 
Oh, my gosh, it's 12 o'clock. Well, I've got to run. Wait a minute. Drop a glass slipper or something. <laughs> Goodbye, Wally. Thanks for the Coke. Sure. It, it was brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Charlie, make it a double, will you please? Sure, Mr. Ammon. You must get tired of hearing me play Princess Jones. It's good music. How many years have you been coming up here, Charlie? It's my fifth summer. Why do you keep coming back? In town, I'm a waiter. Here, I'm the head bartender. Well, you've got a pretty good excuse. What's mine? You? You're Mr. South Wind. Well, I'm making a little promise to myself. Don't expect me back next year. <laughs> you said that last year, Mr. Ammon. Camp Tamarack, eh? Please, Mr. Green. Come on! Don't do you any good whining, miss. I'm putting an end to this once and for all. Oh. Even if I have to bring Clabber here with his pajamas on. Please, Mr. Green, look, if you'll just listen... Busting into this place. It's private property. Hey, what's all this? I caught a red-handed Noel, another trespasser. Ah, oh, come on, Max. Turn off the two-way wrist radio, will you? We'll give the young lady a bruise, as well as a lawsuit. The lawsuit? She happens to be my guest. There are people paying 50 bucks a day here. Now, look, Noel, let's not go inviting armies of little girls over here free of charge. Breach, this little army of one was over here to audition for a job on the staff. Staff? I'm up to my belly button in staff. Half a Greenwich Village. You can always cut down by one any time you say. Who? Me. Now, wait a minute, Noel. It isn't as bad as that. If you, if you need her, then you need her. Thanks, thanks. You're a true patron of the arts. <laughs> Mr. Airman. I think nothing of it. It's the very least I could do for a colleague. Well, where's the enemy vessel? Oh, it's down there. Come on. Mr. Airman, I'm, I'm terribly grateful and terribly embarrassed. Well, I mean, I... I am a trespasser. Now, look, if you're worried about my little white lie, forget it. Greach gets away with murder. And I do need help. Oh, I wouldn't think of holding you hey, to it. Hey, what's this? A sense of honor? You want to learn theater, don't you? You mean you're, you're offering me a job? I can't believe it. Well, you won't be playing Pygmalion, of course. Of course. I suggest you think it over and let me know at the end of the week. Oh, Mr. Airman, I can't thank you enough. Nonsense. Come on, I'll give you a hand. Oh. Oh. I forgot Marcia. I have to wait for my friend Marcia. Not Marcia Zelenko. Yes. She went off with your piano player. I can't understand what, what's keeping her. You can't? Well. Well, I'll leave you to your vigil. Good night, Miss Morningstar. Oh, the name is Morgenstern. Yes, I know. Morning Star. Marjorie Morning Star. He's so wonderful, isn't he? You know what I think? I think you've got a case on him. Oh, that's ridiculous. Come on, come on, get in there. Girls! Now listen, I'm paying you to work around here, not to watch rehearsals. Yes, sir. If you want to see the show, buy a ticket. Everybody's sneaking around, using up my paint. Lovable Maxwell Greach, patron of the art. Did you say art? Huh. Noel Airman, Southwind Follies. No mention of Wally Ronkin, famous author. 
And not a word about Marjorie Morningstar. Well, you'd better make tracks, my boy, before Greech catches you out here. Margie, as a personal favor, would you please not call me my boy? <laughs> I'm sorry, Wally. That's better. Oh, I happen to be the bearer of glad tidings. There's a dance tonight. Why don't you let me take you out of all this squalor? Wally, I think that by nightfall, I'm going to be much more interested in bed. We can discuss that, too. Oh, Wally. Margie, why won't you come with me? You can't imagine what capital you're accumulating in heaven by being nice to me, occasionally. Uh, Wally, I do like you. Uh... Uncle Samson! <laughs> Marjorie, how are you? I'm fine. A big surprise, no? Well, your papa says to me, says, Samson, you look tired. Take a vacation. I said, a vacation I've had all my life. <laughs> what I need is a job. So your papa fixed it. You're working here? Yes, in, in the kitchen. For a change, I work days and I sleep nights. <laughs> your mama didn't tell you. Not a word. So the uncle has to keep an eye on the baby, so what? Uh, you think I'd spoil your fun? <laughs> you have a good time, darling. What do I know? I'm busy in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, Uncle Samson. <laughs> Forget about it. You'd think Mom was guarding Fort Knox. Well, Marjorie, to a mother, it's more important than Fort Knox. I'll see you later. Okay. But again, they'll be shouting the punchlines at you. Okay, Chief. Okay, I got a million of them. How about the hotel bed? Try it. Good. Uh, give me a girl to work with. Is a nice warm body? Okay, Marjorie, get up there. Go on. Chief, I can't work with them when they're all bundled up. Sorry, Marjorie, you're out. Uh, Karen, take over. Oh, tough luck, kiddo. Mr. Airman, please give me another chance. I, I can do it right. I know I know I can. Hey, go on back there and wait for me. I want to talk to you. Go on. All right, let's go. You're a little rough on the kid, weren't you? Was I? Well, she's been hanging around for weeks waiting for this chance. You could have let her down a little easier. Wally, get ready for your cue, will you? I took you out of that skit is because it just wasn't funny. You're much too young and wholesome. It, it just wasn't right with you doing it. What, what am I supposed to be doing here, Viv? Look, when you gave me this job, you told me that I was going to be able to learn the theater. All I've done since I've been here is, is sweep floors and, and paint scenery. I've been here a month, and, and you don't even know I'm alive. Oh, no, Marjorie, that's where you're wrong. I've noticed you from the first minute you came. If you don't belong here, Marjorie, why don't you go home? Go home? Why? Because if you stay, you can get into a whole lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? No. No, what 
Reynolds wants to know if that skit's all right for tonight. Well, you wanted more time for your writing. Well, you got it. What do you mean? Frankie and Marjorie to work with me backstage. Marjorie? If she wants the job. Look, Noel, I don't really need a replacement. I can do the lights and the props and write, too. I want the job. Call a break, Wally. Everybody back in an hour. Don't you care to have lunch with me? I'd love to. Wally, you've got work to do. Sakes, <laughs> what's your secret? Spare no details and don't worry about shocking me. What's going on between you and Noel? Nothing's going on. You know, I believe you. Oh, Marsha, I've got to get this stuff ready for the fiesta. Do you mind if I give you one tiny little piece of advice? Promise not to sock me. All right, what is it? Just this. If he ever does get you cornered in that rustic little love nest of his one evening, don't bite and scratch too hard. He's not used to such struggling. Oh, Marcia, that mind of yours. Don't look so cross-eyed. It's not a fate worse than death. Listen, you take a poll of your graduating class 10 years from now and just see how many of them clinch the deal without giving away a few free samples. <laughs> oh, there you go, reacting like a firecracker again. Well, pay no attention to me. <laughs> I'm gradually learning not to. You stick to your ideals, sweetheart. Lord knows mine have got me exactly nowhere. But, uh, we'll compare notes when we're old and gray and see who came nearer the mark. Okay? Okay. <laughs> One, two, right, two, right. A little more coffee, Doctor? Mm, no, no thanks, Samson. I've had enough. My uncle is watching. Oh, Samson won't mind. He likes me. Uh, please, no, not here. Come to my cabin tonight. We'll have dinner together. Your niece is a very pretty girl, Samson. Better keep an eye on her. She'll grow up fast around here. No matter what job I get, Doctor, I'm always a night watchman. <laughs> Come in. Would you chill the champagne, please? Yes, sir. Well, Uncle Sampson, I see they promoted you to wait here. Just for tonight. And uh, just for me. You are special. Forks go on the left. Excuse me. When should I bring the dinner? I have the feeling you'll know when. I'm not very experienced at this. Oh, you're doing all right. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to save such a gentleman. Shall I open the champagne? Not unless you want a drink. Oh, Mr. Greech has a sign in the kitchen that the help shouldn't drink on the premises. I won't tell if you won't. Your health. Your health. Tell me, Uncle Sampson, 
How long have you had this uh, occupation? This is the first time it's been necessary. Tell me, Mr. Ehrman, since this is new for me, uh, what am I supposed to do now? Right about now, you should be loading your shotgun. You know, uh, you can be a very nice fella. Nice fellas don't have much fun. This fun, it's, it's, uh, it's so important to you? Very. But for how long? Sometimes it lasts a whole summer. Some people want it to last a whole lifetime. For me, uh, a summer feels like a lifetime. Then you've picked the wrong person to have supper with. Maybe my guest won't show up. It, it's happened before, you know. Mm, she'll be here. She's in love. It's a pity you can be. Good night, Mr. Ehrman. Louie will bring the dinner. Come in. Well, here I am. Oh, champagne. That's very nice. Oh, that's a beautiful view. This is really a lovely cabin. I, I like it. Can I take your coat? Oh, no. Uh, oh, no, it, 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 it is a little chilly. Maybe you better call a cop. A cop? What for? Impairing the morals of a minor would be the charge, no doubt. Oh, get it out. No, Marjorie. No, really. This was a mistake. I, I'm sorry. I have no time for another Shirley in my life. Shirley? Yes, Shirley. It's a trade name for the respectable middle-class girl who likes to play at being worldly. And that's your label for me? Darling, it's monogrammed all over you the way parents sew camp initials on a child. Hands off, decent girl, object matrimony. Oh, I'm not saying you're wrong and I'm right. Oh, no. All I'm saying is I haven't got a chance without the little wedding ring. And since I have no intention of marrying you or anyone like you, well, then, I haven't got a chance. You think I'm just a stupid kid with a crush on you. Aren't you? What if it's true? You won't get me to do anything wrong. Naturally not. Surely only hugs and paws on a rigidly graduated scale. Now look, Marjorie, I'm being perfectly honest with you. I just want no part of it. It's not for me. Marjorie! <laughs> Leave me alone. I haven't quite finished. What do you have as far as I'm concerned? Now, you listen to me. When I called you Shirley, it wasn't to insult you. It was to tell you that I know you. I know everything about you. I've gone out with hundreds of Shirleys. Oh, a different dress, a different body. But with that one unchanging look, the look of Shirley. You know an awful lot, don't you? Enough to tell you that you're going to marry some nice young doctor. And with your mother's blessings, help them develop a practice in New Rochelle. Well, I'm glad you've got it all figured out. Well, it was figured out before I came along. Marjorie, we're an error in matchmaking. You're on a course charted by 5,000 years of Moses and his Ten Commandments. I'm a renegade. Why are you telling me all this? What are you trying to prove? If you don't want anything to do with me, then forget about me. Get somebody else. I don't want anybody else. Oh, 
No. I don't understand. You. Me. Anything. Hasta la fiesta, senores and senoritas. Now commencing in our vast outdoor amphitheater, the most glorious summer event of the season. It's fiesta time at South Wind. Fiesta! Are you a guest? Yes. isn't she? Well, we may as well face it, Mom. I've gone to the dogs. <laughs> how, uh, how long will you be staying? Well, we have to be at Seth's camp at 6. We promised to have dinner with him. Oh. Marjorie, I don't blame you. He's so handsome. Who? Who? Noel Ammon. <laughs> how did you know? I've been here two hours, haven't I? Look, why don't you call him over? We'd like to meet him. All right. Noel. Noel, I'd like you to meet my mother and father, Mr. and Mrs. Morgan How are you, Mrs. Morgan Stern? How, how do you do, do, you do, do Mr. Morgan How are you? I know pleasure. how busy you are, but won't you sit down with us? The fiesta can wait till I've had a drink. Uh, uh, Bob, uh, may I? Uh, are uh, you from New York, Mr. Ammon? Well, Greenwich Village at the moment. Oh, Greenwich Village. Yes. Uh -huh. Do you put on shows in the winter also? I'm a songwriter, Mrs. Morgan Stern. Oh, a songwriter. Well, what have you written? Well, Noel's writing a Broadway show, Princess Jones. Oh, you should hear it. It's fabulous. Well, a hit show or something. I only have one act. How do you spell your name again? A-I-R-M-A-N. Oh, A-I-R-M-A-N. I know a Judge Airman, but he spells it E-H-R-M-A-N. He's my father. Judge Ammon is your father? Really? Well, for heaven's sake, why didn't you say so? When well, you've been so busy asking questions. Arnold, did you hear that? Judge Ammon's son. A fine man. I'm afraid a great deal of my father's charm depends on which political district you happen to live in. <laughs> we have a great many acquaintances in common. Well, I know your mother quite well from the UJA. And don't you have a sister, Monica, who's married to the Snow Maiden dry cleaning people? That's my sister. Noel, don't you think we ought to be getting back to the fiesta? Come to think of it, your mother spoke to me once about having a son who wrote songs. But I should think with a judge for a father, you would be in law. Well, you see, Mrs. Morgenstern, I flunked out of law school with the lowest grades in the history of Cornell University. You sound proud of it. Well, it is some sort of a record, isn't it? Uh, tell me, uh, how long have you been working on this play? Three or four years. Well, I guess a writer has to wait for uh, inspiration, doesn't he? I work in spurts, Mrs. Morgan Stern. Sometimes I'm more productive than other times. Mother, what is all this? 
Forgive me for asking, Mr. Airman, but how old are you now? 33. These days, a man of 33 isn't old. Not like you when you got started, huh? Oh, the way this man worked. But that was business. I guess you don't have much of a head for business, do you, Mr. Airman? You're perfectly right, Mrs. Morgenstern. I don't. Not everybody has to be a businessman, Mother. No, of course not. Still, a man has to be something. Social director in a camp, it uh, must be very interesting, but... Well, I always thought that work was more for a boy. Maybe I'm Peter Pan, Mrs. Morgenstern. Peter Pan was a fairy tale, Mr. Hammond. Life is real. I think I prefer life my way, Mrs. Morgenstern. Well, I really have a lot to do. I, I, I hope you excuse me. It's been nice meeting you. Oh, Mother, how could you? Hmm? No. I'm sorry about the Inquisition. Marjorie, don't go apologizing for your mother. She's got me pegged. She behaved horribly. Not at all. It's just that Mama would feel easier if I wore a gray flannel suit and made 20000 a year. But those are my mother's ideas. I love you exactly the way you are. Marjorie, you are your mother. And now, amigos, the climax of our grand fiesta. The world's greatest torero will meet the world's most ferocious bull. And here he is, Manolito, Manolito, the greatest matador in all Mexico.
Oh, what's the matter with him? Nothing. Nothing. He's clowning, that's all. Come, Rose. I'll get the car. It is I, Princess. A wicked witch has put me into this form of a bespectacled toad. One kiss, and I spring erect, a handsome social director in a black sweater. Wally, getting yourself drunk isn't going to make you a social director. I am not drunk. I am a man with problems. Serious problems. You too? It's terrible, isn't it? What? Wishing for something you can't have. Thank you, Marjorie. Always remember that kiss. Well, that was the first and the last, Wallace. Maybe it won't be the last. Maybe it'll happen again. Maybe. Sometime when there are colored lanterns again. No lambman doesn't need colored lanterns, does he? All right now. Looks colored lanterns, talks colored lanterns. Maybe that's all he is, a mass of colored lanterns. You know you've really had three or four too many. Let me tell you something, Miss Morning Glory. You'll come to me when I'm a successful playwright. You'll come begging for a job from Wally Ronkin, famous author. You know something? I'll give you the part. I'll give it to you in gratitude for your one generous kiss under the colored lantern. And give your precious love, your very precious love to me. <laughs> Uncle Samson. I never knew what a beautiful niece I had till today. Oh, thank you. Come dance once with the uncle. I'd love to. Oh, Uncle Samson, you waltz beautifully. We should do this more often. What we should do in life, <laughs> and what we do... Marjorie, you know... <laughs> At my age, give me instead some kitchen wickets. It's easier. Are, are you all right? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just, I just need a minute's rest. I, I'm going to take you to your room. I'm, I'm, I'm over. Right. You know, I'll sit on the steps. I'll get a little all right. fresh air. I'll, I'll be all right. I think I sit here a minute. I'll get you a glass of water. No, no, no. Stay here with me. I feel better already. Do you? What was the matter, Marjorie, when you came in upstairs tonight? You look so sad. It was nothing. You know, Marjorie, tonight, for the first time, I realize you're not a little girl anymore. I wish the folks would realize that. Samson. 
Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. I had a big day. I'm a little tired. Sure. I'll put you to bed. What am I, a baby? Don't talk to me like your mom. <laughs> I go by myself. Good night, darling. Good night, Uncle Samson. Good night, Noah. Good night, Samson. Well, did your parents convince you? They want me to take a trip out west. Yellowstone Park, the Grand Canyon. I could have sworn that deep down your mother saw hope in me. Well, I guess I can't buck your family and your ancient god of vengeance. Well, I don't see how God could possibly be concerned with a pitiful little summer romance. Do you think I should go? Do you care at all? That doesn't solve anything. Marjorie, what words are you trying to ring out of me? That I'll marry you? It has to happen, it will. If you want to be clever, don't be clever. I'm not trying to be clever. Go oh, all right, then. Go out west. Do what your mother says. The American should see the Grand Canyon. Why? Why did I ever meet you? You may be lying when you say you love me. I'll probably never know. But I love you so much. It's all been a fog all summer. The reason you're so crazily in love is that I am, too. This happens to everyone once in a lifetime, and it's happened to us. Oh, no. I love you. I don't care about anything else. My whole life will go by, and nothing will change it. I love you. I can't refuse you anything. heart, Marjorie. He's gone. No! Uncle Samson, come back. Come back. Uncle, oh, please. Go away. Please go away. Shocking. You'll have to do something, Noel. Change the activities for tomorrow. <laughs> you do it. I'm leaving tonight. and a man, I can get myself a husband. <laughs> oh, there they are. I'll see you. Okay. Doesn't she look oh, wonderful? Hello, Mary. Hi. Hi. So beautiful. How are you doing? Thank you. Oh, oh and Papa. the ceremony was just wonderful. My daughter, the first college graduate in the family. How does it feel to be out of school, Marjorie? Oh, just great. Now I've got to go out and face the cruel world. <laughs> well, if you're really serious about a job, you could come to work in my office. I could use another girl. Oh, thank you, Papa. But I hope to join Actors' Equity. You mean you're really going to look for an acting job? I'm going to get one. Well, it's a crazy way to make a living, but uh, at least she'll be out in the open air a lot. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Doc. Hello. Hello. How, How are you? Nice Good to see, see you. you. Marjorie, it's the doctor. Congratulations. Thank you. 
How's your mother? Oh, fine. She's fine. Thank you so much for coming, David. Well, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. <laughs> My aching feet appreciate this. Uh, any luck? I have a speaking part. Would you like to hear it? Yes, yeah, shoot. Uh, well, wait a minute. I have to get in the mood. <laughs> Grandpa, Grandpa, Hawthorne's back from the war. Ma, won't it be nice to have a man around the house again? That's all? My debut. <laughs> <laughs> So don't forget, five o'clock sharp. Shall I dress? No, this is just one of those cocktail parties for a doctor. Meet me in the hospital lobby. I'll be there. Five o'clock. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Miss Morgenstern, there's a gentleman waiting to see you. Oh, where? Thank you. Got a minute for a long-lost friend? Oh, well, look at you. Oh, do you like the costume? It's a... Uh... Standard Madison Avenue, junior executive type. Executive? Uh, 20000 a year, plus expenses. Uh, not the car. That belongs to Rothmore, Sims, and Otis. Advertising. And so do I, body and soul. Look, hop in, and I'll give you the whole rags to riches story over cocktails at the plaza. Oh, no, I, I can't. I have to dress for a date. He'll love you just as you are, unless he's insane. No, I, I really can't. Marjorie? There are powerful cosmic forces at work. Don't you fight this. Please, Marjorie. Just 15 minutes. Look, I'll keep my watch on the table. Come on, come on. Come on. Uh. Pick up his death to the old Noel, that seedy tramp, and long life to the man in the gray flannel suit. <laughs> Well, Marjorie, you've broken me. I'm saddled, bridled, bitted, and tamed. Children ride me in Central Park for a dime. I assure you, I never had any intention of breaking you. Darling, use your lovely noodle. Why am I clapped in harness nine to five, chained to a desk? All right, why? Because I want you to know me as a solid citizen. Because of you. And I'm doing all right, too. They're crazy about me at the agency. Rothmore's grooming me for vice president. Honest. Tell your mother to put that in a pipe. Oh, I think that's marvelous. But what about Princess Jones? Oh, see, that, that was all part of my adolescence. I, I'll leave that to kids like Wally. Here, here, take, take off those gloves. I want to see your pretty hands. Oh, you silly fool. Why? No, go on, go on, take them off. I, I, I want to see your hands. <laughs> I've never known such an imbecile. There. Pretty enough? Beautiful. No rings. I take it Dr. Kildare isn't making good time. Heck, he isn't. No, and I don't want to keep him waiting. I have to run. Just one more dance. Oh, no. Please, Marjorie, I may never see you again. You'll marry Dr. Kildare, and it'll be impossible. I do have this date, and... Yes, I, I arranged to have them play it. I... I really must go. I'll drop you at the hospital. No, I can get a cab. Thank you. Goodbye. You're still Marjorie. And I'm relieved. It does me good to know that last summer I wasn't in a state over just another girl. That's really what I am, just another girl. I won't forget you. Goodbye, Noel.
calling Dr. Marshall. Calling Dr. Marshall. David. Marjorie. See, the party's just about over. I I'm terribly sorry. I ran into an old friend, and the time just flew. Marjorie, let me ask you a weird question. Was it Noel Airman? I didn't plan it, David. I'd have hung up if he phoned. It's all right, Marjorie, I understand. I guess I always figured he was bound to show up sooner or later. I'm sorry. Can I take you home? Well, I can get a cab. Goodbye, Marjorie. Goodbye, David. I thought you'd like to know I'm back in circulation. Darling, let's go out and do the towel. I'll come and get you. No, don't be insane. Well, why not? We'll have hamburgers and we'll ride back and forth in the ferry. You can come up here and fight me off. <laughs> not a chance. Do you realize you have actually called me for a date? I told you. You're ruining my life. I wonder if you're doing it deliberately. I'm in love with you. I'm in love with you, too. One of us must crack. <laughs> Not me. Good night, Noel, darling. So he's turned up again. Oh, Mother, you'd better get used to him, because he's going to be your son-in-law. You really think so? Oh, I, I know it. I just know it. <laughs> Oh, Mother, I love him so much. Well, as long as he's going to be in the family, ask him up to the house. Yes, Mother dear. Invite him to Passover dinner. Oh, not Passover, Mother. Noel isn't very religious. He, he doesn't believe in those things. He doesn't believe in those things? You're going to get married. How are you going to raise your children? All right, Mother. I'll invite him. This is the poor bread which our fathers ate in the land of Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat with us. Whosoever is needy, let him come and celebrate the Passover with us. This cup in the center of the table is the cup of Elijah, our missing guest. And this chair was Uncle Samson's. Noel, I, I'm sorry you were so bored. Oh, no, Marjorie, I wasn't bored. I was disturbed. Deeply. I couldn't help thinking of all the things I've missed in life. Family, your kind of family. Faith, tradition, all the things I've been ridiculing all the time. That's why I couldn't take it anymore. I love you very much, Marjorie Morgan Stan. Really? I'm just thrilled for you. Holy smoke, everybody in the world is here tonight. Where's Noel? Oh, he went to get some cigarettes. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I had a 
date when I came in. I don't know where she went. Oh, there she is. Oh, she's darling. She's unconscious. I don't know how she finds her way around the streets. The only thing I like about her, her name's Marjorie. Hi. Thank you. Hiya, Wally. Looks like you're suffering through a hit. Do you really think so, Noel? My lap meter registered 100. You're in, kid. Gee, I hope you feel that way after the last act. Oh, uh, are you coming to the party after the show? Uh, not me, Wally. I'm strictly a nine to five man. You'll be up till dawn taking vows. Well, okay. Thanks for coming. Little Wally has a hit. I, I couldn't be happier. I, I just couldn't be happier. I, I feel like the old maestro watching his protege make good. I'm glad, no. Oh, I thought maybe, you know, you might feel funny. Oh, nonsense. Wally's doing what he wants to do. I'm doing what I want to do. Oh, come here. I want to show you my hit. You see that sign up there towering over Broadway proclaiming the virtues of ice cubes? Written, produced, and directed by Noel Ehrman, the Shakespeare of advertising. All oh, these young fellas like Wally, they, they write okay, but they don't have the je ne sais quoi for doing advertising copy. That, that, that takes real creative ability. Madam, dear madam, have you seen the new deluxe Arctic refrigerator, especially compartmented for fowl, vegetables, old socks, used razor blades, shrunken human heads, hamburgers, beef burgers, fish burgers, burger burgers? <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? Wally Rockin's got a hit. A kid I picked up, a boy, he's got a hit. No, old darling, you can do anything Wally can do. You can do it better. With one difference, he always finishes what he starts. I'm never able to. I seem to have a fatal lack of central organizing energy. You're the most talented man I'd ever met. Oh, Marjorie, people have been telling me that for the last 15 years. When does the airplane get off the ground? Where's it going? No, old No, no, give it up. Give it up, Marjorie. I'm no good. I'm never going to mount anything. I'm all surface. Everything I have goes up in charm and conversation. And I know it. Why can't I do anything about it? Oh, Sam Rothmore isn't paying you for charm and conversation. You said he was grooming you for his job. Is it what I want? Well, then quit. Do something you like. Anything you do, you'll do brilliantly. I can't go back to my play. I'm sour on it. I don't care what you do, no. As long as you don't stop loving me. Darling, you haven't the faintest idea how much good you do me. You're like adrenaline. Do you know what? I'm going back to the office right now and work. I'm going to cook up the most beautiful brochure Sam Rothmore has ever seen. <laughs> Come on, I'll put you in a cab. All right. Do you mind? No. Good night, Charlie. Good night. I'll call you tomorrow. Say Mr. Ehrman, please. Have you any idea where he is? No, I've tried there, too. Yes, thank you. Looking for Mr. Airman's apartment. Oh, this is it. Come on in. Uh, 
I was expecting a boy with the groceries. Are you Marjorie? Yes. He's taking a shower. Hey, your friend Marjorie's here. What? I said Marjorie is here. Oh, fine, give me some coffee. I'll be right out. Oh, I'm Imogene Norman. I'll be gone in a jiffy. Here, help yourself to coffee. It's just hotting up. Oh, well, now, don't start throwing things at him when he comes out. You see, I landed in New York without five dollars to my name. Boy, was I broke. So, no, let me park here all week. Well, I know it sounds peculiar, but we well, just have to believe it. He's staying, uh... Upstairs on the fourth floor with a sculptor friend. Comes down here to shower because all his things are here. Well, I'm glad you told me. I was about to stab him with a bread knife. <laughs> You're awfully pretty. Well, thanks. But you're one girl who has nothing to fear. Are you a model? Well, I'm really more a singer, but modeling pays the bills, you might say. Hey, have you drowned? I'm off. Hi. Have any trouble finding your way here? Well, bye. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Oh, I've uh, already explained to Marjorie that you're sleeping upstairs, so she won't be breaking any crockery over your head. Besides, I've got my reputation to think about. Well, arrivederci, as we say in Texas. Can I offer you a drink? I think you'd do better with some eggs or cereal. Marjorie, cereal is what's poisoning America and causing the rise in mental disorders. That's better. Really falling apart, Marjorie. Yeah. I guess that's why I didn't call you all week. I was so worried, Noel. I thought you might be sick. I was sick. Sick as I've ever been. Sick of trying to figure out who I am and why I'm here and what it's all about. Don't you think you should answer the phone? It might be your office. You answer it. Tell them I quit. Tell them there's no power left on Earth that can turn me into a docile commuter. Black-eyed look. Oh, Marjorie. Do you know the question I've been asking myself for the last three days? Who am I? You're the man I love. Oh, darling. darling, you're unspeakably pretty and bright, and, and you have talent. You really do. You, you keep trying and you're going to have your name up on those lights on 44th Street, blinking away. Darling, what is it? Marjorie, I've searched my soul truthfully and honestly for the first time. I asked myself, do you want to marry Marjorie? You're in love with her. The answer is no. Not on her terms. And I ask myself, is it money you want? The answer is no. No, not on Rothmore's terms. Well, is there some other woman you want then? Miss America, Miss Universe? No. No, no, no. There's no other girl I ever met who even comes close to you. But Marjorie, love of my life, we're through. You can't mean that. You're tired. Yes. Yes, I'm tired. I'm tired of playing the horse to your rider. And believe me, Marjorie, whether you know it or not, you've ridden me mercilessly. Well, I'm throwing you. I'm running off. Who are you running away from, Noel? Don't you understand? 
I ache with pleasure right now just touching you. That's what's damned me, destroyed me. I've been playing the game by your asinine rules, being faithful to you. Can you imagine what that means to me, not to touch you and yet not to touch another girl? Believe me, if Imogene hadn't come along and broken the spell, Imogene. I'd gone... Imogene! What's the matter? Oh, good Lord, don't tell me you believed Imogene. But... I did. I did. Oh, Marjorie, I thought you were pretending to ignore it. How could you possibly be... Well, Imogene and I... I'm in love with you. That's why I believed her. Get out of my way, you rotten tramp. change in Act 3. I'm sorry, Paul. I don't like it. It captures the mood, in my opinion. Well, <laughs> try capturing it my way, huh? Okay, just as you say. Marjorie Morningstar. What are you doing here? I came to read for the part of the sister. Well, sure, come over here. Oh, no. I'm just part of a group, Wally. I'll wait my turn. I'll be with you in a minute, folks. Come on. You look like the orphan in the storm. Wally... I've read your play, and I know all the sisters' lines. I feel the part. I don't want any special treatment. I just want to read. You look enchanting. What have you been up to? Oh, the usual. Pounding the pavement. I did an off-Broadway show. Well, I haven't set off any rockets yet. Well, it's all come true, hasn't it, Wally? What? You're the successful playwright, and I've come to you just as you said. Only I don't want any favors. Marjorie, you don't have to read for me. But I want to. I want to prove to you that, that I am an actress. Or maybe I just want to prove it to myself. The part is yours. Just like that? Just like that. Report for rehearsal Monday morning. I'll notify the producer. Oh, by the way, why don't you prowl around out front? There's a friend of yours here, doing pretty well for herself, too. Sugar bun! Oh, Marcia! <laughs> Darling! Oh, you're a sprig of lilac, just as ravishing as ever. <laughs> Same old Marcia. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm here with my boyfriend. He's got money in this opera. Come on, meet him. Lou, honey. Lou, I want you to meet my oldest and dearest friend, Marjorie Morningstar, Lou Michelson. How are you, Marjorie? I certainly heard a lot about you. Oh, thank you. Oh, and, and this is Lou's lawyer, Phil Berman. Well, how do you do, Miss Morningstar? Uh, are you in our show? Well, just barely. One scene. Oh, this kid's really got it. She's gonna set Broadway on fire. The blaze is hardly noticeable. Well, you must be excited. Oh, I'm on cloud seven. All right, you girls will excuse us. We got business at the box office. Oh, hey, sure. Come on, Phil. Certainly nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Blue's a darling. He's no boy, of course, but he's very sweet, and he insists on buying me things. <laughs> you look just great. Well, I've done the best I can with the old Hulk. Is it all over between you and Noel? For good? Well, I can't say that you haven't got the right idea. Lou's a little older than Wally, of course, but I guess it boils down to the same thing. If you can't have what you want, you uh, take the next best. There's nothing between Wally and me. Same old record, huh? Marcia, I got this part because Wally thinks I can play it. Oh, sure, sure, baby. I'm with you. Doesn't matter how the trolley gets started as long as it takes you where you're going. Woo! I see my master waving. Honey, come to my wedding. That's right. Lou and I are going to get married. I fought the good fight, but now I want some of those things a trusty checkbook can buy. <laughs> Goodbye, honey. Goodbye, Marcia. Right. 
crying out loud, Wally. Who is she? Her name is Marjorie Morningstar, and I want her to play the part. She's nobody. She'll hurt the play. Look, Paul, she won't hurt it. She won't help it. There are thousands like her on Broadway. All she needs is a taste of the fruit minutes over. Well, I want her to have that taste. Kid, we can't start doing favors. This is business. Look, Paul, we're hung up on that percentage, right? All right, I'll give in on that point. Well, that's different. That's business. She's got it. Thank you, Wally. Marjorie. Thank you very much. There's your second kiss, darling. For whatever it's worth. I want you to have the best of everything. Always. So why don't you get the best actress for the part? That's business. May I give you some champagne? Pardon me a moment. Marjorie's darling. Mrs. Zelenko. Isn't it thrilling? Marsha and Lou leave for Europe right after the wedding. Excuse me a moment. Someone's just come in I want you to meet. Marjorie. David. Hello. I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. How have you been? Just fine. You look wonderful. Uh, David, I'd like you to come see the lovely wedding cake. In a minute. I want you to meet someone. This is Marjorie Morningstar, my wife, Helen. How do you do? You're as pretty as David told me you were. Thank you. Would you excuse us a moment? Of course. Marjorie. I want you to meet Philip Berman, Lou's attorney. Oh, we've met. How do you do, Mr. Berman? How are you, Marjorie? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll run in and see how Marsh is getting along. Take care of her, Philip. She's Marsha's oldest friend. I will, Tanya. Would you like a drink? Thank you. I'd love one. Well, may we have some? Thank you. This is a pleasant surprise. I dropped back to rehearsal last week. I had a shock. You weren't in the show. I gave up the part. Oh? Is it for the reason, I think? No, I'm pounding the pavement again. I was probably crazy. Marjorie, please. Marsha wants to see you. Oh, excuse me. Of course. Bridal nurse, I guess she's got a bad case of it. Please talk to her. She's asking for you right in there. Oh, Marjorie. Just a few more minutes now. Do I look nervous? Mama, ha, ha, how's Marsha? Wonderful, wonderful, Lou. We're just going take, to... Uh... Take good care of her, Mama. Oh, Lou. Hi, Phil. Bridal nurse? Not me. Marsha, darling. I just want to talk to Marjorie, Mama. Marsha, dear, please pull yourself together. Mama, leave me alone. Twenty-seven bucks shot. Well, La Morning Star, how do you feel? Nervous? I'm not. Calmest bride you ever saw. Well, sit down, for heaven's sakes. Don't stand there looking at me. Well, time for one more cigarette. My last is a free girl. The next one I smoke, I'll be Mrs. Lou Michelson. Why is it, I wonder, I was destined never to have anything I ever really wanted? Oh, Marcia, look, when the time comes for me to take the fatal plunge, I'll probably have an attack of nerves twice as bad. It doesn't seem to me like I ever wanted very much. A friend, a job, and a fella. Oh, darling, I'm so alone. Oh, no. I'm so absolutely alone. Now I'll be alone forever, till the day I die. You are the last girl in the world I ever thought would get maidenly hysterics. What's the matter with me? I'm not supposed to have feelings. I'm some sort of lizard or something. Marsha, for heaven's sake, it's, it's perfectly natural. Oh, sure. Natural for everybody except Marsha Zelenko. Marjorie, have you any idea how infuriating it is for me to think of you giving up Noel Ehrman? Where do you get the willpower? What runs in your veins anyway, ammonia? Look, you're madly in love with this man, and he loves you the way he's never loved any other girl. Do you know what I'd give for one hour of such a love affair? My eyes. 
Oh, I know what you must think about my marrying Lou Michelson. Lou's a fine man. I could get down on my hands and knees and kiss his hands for being willing to take over and be good to me and give my family the things they want. I haven't got a Noel Airman in love with me. If I had, I'd follow him around like a dog. Oh, Marjorie, you fool. You've got the whole world's gold at your feet. Youth and good looks and a wonderful lover. And you toss it aside like so much garbage. Marsha, for heaven's sake. Oh, oh, Lordy, sugar bun, go out there and hold him at bay, would you? Sure. Baby, forget everything I said. I can't tell you why I've always loved you, or why I fuss over you so. But you'll be all right, no matter what you do. You're God's favorite, Marjorie Morningstar. Twenty seven bucks. you might be here. That's why I'm braving this madhouse. How are you, Noah? Have a better. Are you want a life? Oh. Still got the shakes. I had the fever in Mexico. I guess I look pretty awful. I've seen you looking better. Well, I'll return the compliment by saying you've bloomed. You're a woman, that's what. A lovely, beautiful woman. Thank you. Well, here's the sweet reunion. Or oh, maybe I should drink to Princess Jones. It's almost finished, you know. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, yes, it's great. Terrific. Three producers interested. If it's ever produced, I'll send you a check. A check? It's half yours, you know. Everything about it is you. The music is permeated by you. Glad you're working so hard. Marjorie, I've thought about you incessantly, day and night. I need you, Marjorie. I need you. My friends, we are assembled here in the presence of God to join this man and this woman in marriage. Let us therefore remember that God has established and sanctified marriage for the welfare and happiness of mankind. Do you, Lewis, take this woman to be your wife, and will you pledge your troth to her in all love and honor? I, I do. Do you, Marcia, take this man to be your husband, and will you pledge your troth to him in all love and honor? I do. The ring, please. By the authority committed unto me as a judge, I declare Lewis and Marcia are now husband and wife, according to the ordinance of God and the law of the state of New York.
this is the finale. No dialogue, just a boy and girl under white lights on a naked stage. Their dance sums up the theme of the show, man's eternal quest for beauty. Say, boys, are we going to get our feet wet? It's only money, Lou. Whatever you decide. Likewise. Yeah, let's ask a pro. Uh, do you mind if we consult with Wally here, No. Shall I leave the room? I like it. It's you, No. You've got my 880 for a ticket. Yeah, but it's going to cost me and the boys here a lot more. Now, what do you honestly think of its commercial chances, Wally? Oh, no, no. Let him talk. <laughs> what me and my partners would like to know is, could this be another popular show? Uh, like the ones you do, Wally. I mean, catch on the barrel head. Lou, you are not in the Fulton fish market. Uh, give it to me straight, Wally. Well, the only criticism I could offer is perhaps the ending. I know it's terribly honest, no, but it's a little tough to take. I think Wally hit it right on the button. You got a great show here, kid. But, but cut out all that hogwash. Make that last scene a, a plain, honest love scene with a nice clinch at the end. Uh, like Wally ends his shows. What you'd like to see at the finish is a straight love scene. Boy gets girl. They, they ride off into the sunset. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, something like that. And the rest of the show makes you and your lawyer and your associates very happy? It's got a big chance, Noel. Uh, personally, I'd be happier if there were a few more jokes in it. But you know me. I only like what the people like. What's more important is what Noel likes. He should end it the way he believes it should end. Oh, you boys belong to the same union, huh? <laughs> okay, no, do what you like. We're in. And I have your consent to go ahead. Oh, you got more than that. You've got our money. <laughs> oh, I see. And that's why you think you have the right to judge me. Who do you think you are? What are you people doing in the theater anyway? So you can put on a tuxedo and come to opening night? How dare you put me on trial like this? Have you ever created anything in your lives? No. You! How do you make all that money you're patronizing me with? And what do you peddle? When was the last time a girl made love to you and managed? Shut up, no. You, counselor, you look reasonably intelligent. Tell me, how do you get yourself to work for these people? Sit in the same room, breathe the same air! Oh, I don't condemn you. No, no, I envy you. Tell me how you do it, because I'd like to do it too. You've got it made. You've got it made. You've all got it made. Success oozes from all of you. It covers you like a coat of heavy grease. It's disgusting. No, wait a minute. No, no, no walk out on me. I, I'm sorry. I, Michael said, let me do my show. I, everything I've lived for, I've... I've hoped for, I've poured into this show. It can't fail. I promise you, this show won't fail. The guy's a screwball. I didn't understand anything tonight, except he doesn't like us. Well, the trouble with you guys, you don't know genius when it hits you in the head. Thanks, Lou. Sure. There's a lot of good stuff in this show. If you guys want to pull out, I'll go it alone. Who's pulling out? We're businessmen. We're not touching each other. We don't care about it. I hope he has a hit. He can't lose. He's got Marjorie. Well, club. Hello, darling. Look, they're, they're still ice skating in the park. I was just standing here watching them. I, I used to bring your mother down here from the Bronx. It's, it's a beautiful park. Are you all right, Papa? I'm fine, darling. 
You're not worried about business. Business. It's up, it's down. What fun would it be if it never changed? You know, I used to be pretty good on ice skates myself. <laughs> you know, I just can't picture you doing figure eights. Well, 15, 20 years, it's a long time. I was just about his age. Whose? No one's. He has fine qualities. He has a lot of fine qualities. And if that's it, that's it. He'll be our son. Papa. And you can have the wedding anytime. Right now, next month. A catered wedding from Lowenstein with a white dress. You don't understand, Papa. What would we live on? Noel has no income, not yet. He can live here, can't he? I mean, who, who needs all this room? I don't think that would work. This won't work either. I'm not blind. You've changed. He's changing you. I haven't changed. I haven't. Maybe what I'm doing is wrong. I don't know. I'm in love. Maybe. Maybe I should have spent more time with you. I've been neglectful. Noel and I are going to be married just as soon as his show is finished. Will that make you happy? I want anything that makes you happy. You're always giving me things, Papa. What have I ever given you? Someone to love. Good night, my darling. I could have sold them the feathers it cost. Oh, oh Marcia. Oh, Hi. darling, what a triumph. That was absolutely stupendous. Marcia, did you really like it? Like it? Darling, I was overwhelmed. Look, why don't you join us? Noel's coming over the house later with some of the cast. Oh. And we're going to sit up for the reviews. Okay, Noel? Yeah, sure, sweetheart. You run along with them. I'll wait up for the papers. Oh. Oh, Crucified. No. I told him to change the ending. Oh, those critics, what do they know? I tell you, it'll run a year. Where's No? I left him backstage. D did he read these? Every word.
Marjorie, darling. I've come to take you home. Papa, he's gone. Come home, Marjorie. I'm not going home. I'm going to know. Where is he? I don't know. He said I mustn't look for him. I should forget him. Maybe. Maybe it's better this way. You don't understand. Noah's been hurt terribly. He's ashamed, ashamed to face me, a failure. Don't you see? Don't you see that? Yes, darling, I see. Wherever he is, I have to help him. But what's the use? He needs me. I have to find him. I have to find him. Don't you understand? <laughs> Good afternoon, Miss Morgan. Good afternoon. Any calls? Uh, no, miss. No letters? Uh, no, miss. Oh, uh, there's a gentleman waiting to see you. Where is he? Uh, in the foyer. No. Disappointed? Oh, Wally. You don't know what it means to... To see a friendly face. Welcome to London. Scene of the newest and greatest ronk and triumph. Seats available for all performances. How on earth did you ever find me here? How does a pigeon find its roost? Put me within 50 miles of you and all the bloodhound comes out. Wish I had some of that bloodhound in me. I take it you're searching for the elusive Mr. Airman. Where have you looked? Where haven't I looked? Vienna, Paris, Zurich. I know he came to London, but I don't know where. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe he doesn't want to be found? I know that. Why are you so persistent? You don't have to ask me that, Wally. So you find him. Then what? Some more of the same all over again? Marjorie, people in love aren't always good for each other. There isn't anything you can tell me I don't already know. Don't you think I've wished a hundred times I'd never met Noel Ammon? Oh, stop talking like you invented something. There's a Noel Ammon in every girl's life. Most of them are luckier than you. They managed to get over him by the end of the first summer. <laughs> Look who's talking. How many summers have I been carrying around the memory of a girl under some colored lanterns? If only it had been you, Wally. How simple it all would have been. Well, nothing ever comes easy for me. We're alike, aren't we? So very much alike. Marjorie, Noel is at South Wind. South Wind? How do you know? I loaned him the money to get there. Oh, Wally. Don't go to him. Let him alone. Oh, he needs help. Not yours. Maybe you can take one more swing around the merry-go-round, but Noel can't. It'll destroy him. What are you saying? Noel has to find himself. He doesn't belong at South Wind. Oh, Marjorie, don't you see? Noel does belong there. He can't rise any higher. You made him think he could. He tried to and almost broke his heart trying. Look, I like Noel, too. Without him, I don't know where I'd be today. That's why I want to see him happy. I'll make him happy. He's happy without you. South Wind is the only place on Earth where he's somebody, where he's important. If you love him, stay away from him. I won't listen to you. All right, go to him. Waited for you to grow up. I thought you had. Goodbye, Marjorie. I'll always love you.
precious love is what you are to me. A stairway to a star, a night in Shangri-La of ecstasy. Lanterns of gold, lanterns of blue, twinkle in the shadows while I dance with you. Isn't that Noel Airman simply marvelous? I wish you wouldn't look at him that way. How can I help it when I'm seeing real genius? Lose their glow and hearts can break. So hold me close, my darling, then kiss me tender. Marjorie. Marjorie Morningstar. Hello, Mr. Greet. Good to see you again. Say, you've really grown up, haven't you? Yes. I think I have. 